Praise the Lord, a very good morning and such a joy and honor to be in the house of God, worshiping God one more time this morning. Even as we were preparing, I was preparing for today, I was seeking the Lord and I sensed in my heart the Lord wanted to bring a very precious and very important message this morning. And the message that is titled for this morning is called Living a Life of Gratitude. Living a Life of Gratitude. The Bible says in Colossians and chapter 2, verse 6 to 8, it says like this, Therefore, as you have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in Him, having been firmly rooted and now being built up in Him and established in your faith, just as you were instructed and overflowing with gratitude. Overflowing with gratitude. Therefore, as you have received Jesus Christ, the Lord, so walk in Him. This is the beginning of the journey that the Bible is saying. You have begun, you have started your journey, you have begun by walking with Jesus Christ, you received Him. Now the Word of God is saying, I want you to be firmly rooted in the faith and being built up in the faith, just as you are instructed, and then... In this whole journey of being rooted and built up in the faith, suddenly the Word of God brings in this new attitude of the heart. And the attitude of the heart that the Word of God brings in is an overflow of gratitude. God calls on every child of God. Part of our growing up, being built up, an established experience in the Christian faith it, that it has to be surrounded and overflowing with a heart of gratitude. For many believers, their Christian life is about being saved, going to heaven, naming and claiming, getting the best possible things from God, and giving as little as possible to the Lord's uh, work, and so that they can benefit from God and do not have to sacrifice anything. But the Bible goes on to say that to all the things that God has done for you and for me, the Word of God is saying, I want you to overflow with gratitude. Isn't that amazing that God would say, find something as important in our Christian life called gratitude? Do you know of someone who seems to be a very negative person? Have you met someone like that? Have you met somebody who, who in their heart, you know, they, they're always complaining and grumbling and feeling uh, that others have, you know, not given them their fair share or do you, God has not done them the due share of good. Do you know a bitter person? If you've met a bitter person, you probably, you are, he's always finding fault with others and feeling in their heart, others are the reason why he or she is unhappy. My mother or my father or my brother, sister, my friends, they're the reason why I'm unhappy. Do you catch yourself? dreading to have to meet with such a person. Do you catch yourself concerned? Oh, there, the person is coming now. I don't want to, oh, can I escape from here? Can I do so? I don't want to talk to that person because I don't know if I'm going to be in the wrong side of having to listen to the person's complaints. But have you ever wondered if that person we're talking about could probably be you? Are you a negative person? Are you a complaining, grumbling person? who's always feeling that others have wronged you. On the contrary, have you met someone who's happy and thankful all the time? Have you ever met somebody in your life who's, who's always got a testimony, always got a song? There's something good to say about what God has done for them. I remember going to, you know, over the last couple of months, we've had to go to Kuchin for, uh, you know, for some of our church weddings and things like that. And and uh, as a family, we happened to go to Lulu Mall there. And when we went there, you know, a, a mall, there's a hypermarket. And, and when we went there, after purchasing stuff from the supermarket, we were, walk, we were going away, driving the car out. And where we have to pay for parking, a man was collecting the payments over there. And I looked at him, and uh, he, he looked a little like a man of short stature. And as I went to pay him the money and... I looked at him, he was just smiling and, and giving us the best smile. And, and I was so amazed by the way he was smiling. I looked at him and I said, you seem to be happy today. And he looked at me and he said, sir, yes, sir, I'm, I'm happy. I'm, anyway, I paid him money and I drove away from that place 
deeply impacted by this happy man i remember telling my wife i said that was an interesting experience to meet someone like that and just to see his smile he was happy from the inside about a month later we happened to go back to the same mall and went back to the same supermarket and and if you may probably purchase the same things and on our way out uh you know or, or driving out went to pay the money and on the way out i saw the same man and here he is he's smiling again a month later i thought to myself maybe the last time was a coincidence but here he is a month later in the same booth making the same collections and he's smiling and he's happy and he's you know it's almost like there's a joy on the inside and i looked at him and i said i love your smile i love the way you're happy it's amazing he said yeah, yes sir i'm happy i draw away thinking in my heart that he was probably more happier than so many of the so called believers that claim to know jesus as their savior he was probably more happier because something on the inside of him made a choice to be grateful for what he had in life than to be complaining about the hundreds or thousands of things that he probably did not have First Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 18 says in everything give thanks for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus it's amazing when you think that God is saying my will for your life is that you have the ability and the humility in your heart to give thanks for every circumstance you know every circumstance is life in life is not good you have good times you have challenging times but the word of God is saying irrespective of the circumstance you're in god is saying i can enable you to be a grateful person i can enable you to be someone who's giving thanks in every circumstance i've had the privilege uh, of uh, you know being associated with some some grateful people and not very far even in our own church office there are some people who are just exuberant with gratitude they're just full of testimony when you meet them they just have something to say about what god has done in their life and often times when i watch them give thanks when i watch them uh, you know have a grateful heart and giving good testimony encouraging others i have thought in my heart and i have compared and have said when i compare my life with theirs they probably are not as maybe have all the talents or gifts i have they probably don't have the no you know money like i may have or they don't have family support or or people to stand with them or they may not have the gifts and talents that i have they may not have the they probably working harder than i am probably working longer than i am maybe working multiple uh, you know kinds of jobs to provide for the family but when we meet them they're always full of gratitude what is it that makes these people stand out why are some of these people so full of gratitude and why are some others people that are not so grateful why is it that some people that have so much can still be grumbling and complaining while other people have so little are full of gratitude you see the challenge is that most people are discontent and it is a struggle in the lives of many people life always demands in life you know it always demands a constant flow of blessings we expect that all our desires must be met all our desires must be fulfilled lord i i i lord i wish i could have that and lord i wish i could have this and god can you bless me with a house and can you bless me with a a new bag or a new computer or a new we're always longing for something new our desires to be fulfilled our expectations we expect in the process favors from others that if god does in supply that someone else would we'd look to our our relatives or our family or our friends and we expect favors from them and we expect provision from god god if you would open the heavens and supply this god if you would bless me and my family like you bless them and their family we are constantly hoping and expecting and the moment these expectations are not fulfilled our flesh cries out foul and says god it's not fair that you bless them and not bless me god it's not fair that you're kind or you're nice to them and you're not helpful to me god i really really want you lord to help me we become upset with god 
We become upset with people that don't meet our expectations. We become upset and we begin to grumble. Francis Swartz, in her book, Chicken Soup for the Soul, tells about a, a person called Jerry, who was always in a good mood and upbeat, and he always had something positive to say. Haven't you and I met some rare people like that? Jerry was a very positive person, and when asked how he was doing, he would always say, if I was any better, I'd be twins. You know, he, he, he always had this positive, positive air about him. Jerry was a restaurant manager who everybody loved to work with. Don't we all love to work with somebody who's positive all the time? They loved to work with him because he was so positive all the time. And Francis said, I didn't get it, Jerry. I didn't get it. You can't possibly be upbeat all the time. How can you do it? How is it even possible, humanly possible, for somebody to be upbeat all the time? And Jerry replied to her saying, Each morning, I wake up and say to myself, Jerry, you have two choices today. You can either choose to be in a bad mood, or you can choose to be in a good mood. And I choose to be happy. I just choose the mood I want to be, and I choose to be in a good mood. Jerry was saying, it had very little to do with circumstance, and it had everything to do with the choice he was making. So suddenly, Francis said, oh, it's not that easy. I protest, Schwartz writes. Yes, it is, Jerry responded. Life is all about circumstances. Well, several years ago, Jerry's restaurant was robbed. And the thieves panicked and shot him. And he was rushed into an emergency room. He spent 18 hours on the operating table and several weeks in intensive care, but he survived. And later she asked him, how did you do it? Jerry, what happened? How, how was the, what happened in that entire situation? And he said, when I was lying down on the floor with a gunshot injury, I remembered I had two choices. I could either choose to live or I could choose to die. And he said, I chose to live. I chose to live and the paramedics that were taking him and rushing him away to the hospital, they were encouraging. But when they wheeled him into the, into the emergency room and he saw the looks on the faces of the doctors and the nurses, he knew in their eyes that soon the option that they thought was going to happen to him was soon he was going to be a dead man. The doctors and the nurses were afraid and they needed to take immediate action. And there was a big burly nurse, a huge man, uh, you know, shouting questions at him and, and, and asked him, uh, are you allergic to anything? And he replied, yes. And suddenly the doctors and the nurses stopped working as they waited for his response. And he replied, bullets. I'm allergic to bullets. And they all began to laugh. Over their laughter, I yelled, I'm, I'm choosing to live. Operate on me as I'm alive and I'm not dead. Don't operate on me like I'm dying. Operate on me like I'm alive and I'm, I plan to live. Operate on me to get me out of this situation. Jerry lived. Thanks to his, the skill of the doctors, to his positive attitude, his desire to live, and to the grace of God. Frances Schwartz says, she says, I saw Jerry six months after the accident and asked him how he was doing. And he replied, if I was any better, I'd be twins. What an amazing attitude Jerry had. Many of us, you know, in leadership, I have learned through, I've heard a, a saying that goes like this, your attitude determines your altitude. The attitude you have towards life is going to determine how far you're going to reach in life. Your attitude in life is going to determine what, you're, what kind of leadership you're going to give people. Your attitude in life is going to determine whether you'll get out of bed or you will laze. Your attitude in life will determine whether you'll be happy or you'll be sad. Your attitude in life is going to determine whether you're going to be a world changer or you're going to allow the circumstances of your world to change you. God wants every one of us to have an attitude 
of gratitude. But the sad truth is that most of us, we're not grateful people. The sad truth is most of us are people that are happy for a short while and then we begin to become ungrateful when God does not answer our prayer. We begin to become ungrateful when people are not kind to us like we're expecting them to be kind. We become ungrateful when people, you know, when our heart, when, when finances run low. We, we were happy when God supplied and now we are upset that finances run low. When it comes to have, having a spirit of gratitude, many of us fall short of the standards that God would want us to have. We're much better grumbling, complaining, pointing fingers, blaming others, you know, going into self-pity, having a pity party and saying, my life is a mess because of everybody else. But despite all the good things that God does for your life and my life, many of us spend years unhappy and complaining to everyone else. Gratitude is a thankful appreciation for what an individual receives, whether tangible or intangible. There is something about the heart that is always appreciating even the smallest things that come their way. They are people that have trained themselves to appreciate. They are people that have trained themselves not to have an entitlement, I deserve this, but to think constantly, I don't deserve any of this. I am so grateful to God and others that have made it possible. With gratitude, people acknowledge to others that there is goodness in their life, that good things have been happening. Gratitude testifies to others that my life is not a mess and full of complaints and problems. My life has a lot of good things happening. Grateful people testify to others about the goodness in their life and others get to know about this goodness. Research has shown that many, there are many benefits of just being grateful. Gratitude helps people in different ways. They have found out that people with, good, with, with a heart of gratitude have positive emotions. They feel more positive emotions than negative emotions. Uh, I've met negative people and positive people. And we love to hang around the positive because there's a vibe around them. Now, negative people are, are, are hoping their world will become positive by others changing their circumstances, others meeting their need, others fulfilling their expectations, others doing what they ask. Negative people are saying, I will become positive when other people change and fulfill my expectation. While positive people are saying, even if the world is negative around me, I choose to be positive. I choose to be happy. It's my decision. Happiness is a choice that I'm going to make. They found out that people that were grateful were just more positive. In fact, they relished more wonderful experiences in life. People that were grateful seem to have, think, they had so many good experiences in life. They're saying, oh, that happened to me. That was wonderful. This one also happened. Now, that person was kind to me. That's so good. You know, this thing came my way. That's so wonderful. That opportunity came my way. What a joy. They relish good experiences. These kind of people, they, they seem to, many of the people that have gratitude in their heart, they seem to have better health. Research found out that they're healthier. They were happier. They were more whole. They dealt with adversity much, much better. Grateful people were people that learned to deal with adversity. When difficult times came their way, they would maybe kick themselves up and they would say, tough times never last, tough people do. They'd find something good in that adversity. They say that they came through that. You know, someone said like this, when all the problems I went through, with all the problems I went through, I found that I had new limits of strength. We begin to understand that we can have greater limits of strength. And grateful people oftentimes are people that build strong relationships. They have more people in their life because people like to hang around with grateful people. They like to be around grateful people. The happiest people on the earth, my dear friends, the happiest people on the earth are not the richest ones or the smartest or the fastest the happiest people on the earth are those that are just grateful. Those that have just chosen to celebrate the good things that happen in their life. And not to give too much attention to all the negativity that comes their way. 
this attitude of gratitude in our heart, it affects even our brain, if you may. When we express gratitude, we receive, we, we, we find out that the brain begins to release some neurotransmitters. The neurotransmitters like dopamine and serotonin and, and these are the happy hormones. They make us, they're, they're mood elevating hormones. Research was done and they found out that people, every time they said something good, that, you know, I know I'm going through a difficult circumstance, but God is good. Oh, there was a neurotransmitter released in their brain. There was a happy moment that came. But those who said, I don't know why this is going on in my life. Oh, I don't know why my life is like this. Well, because of you, I'm happy. Because of you, I don't have money. Because of you, my whole life is messed up. Oh, they're, they're, they would be more and more and more sad. But people that just went on to say, I know we're in this circumstance, but we will come through this. Happy hormones begin to be released in their mind the fail-good ones, and they found that there was an immediate mood elevation. Research was done on this further, uh, on this whole concept of gratitude. Some of the researchers from the University of Miami have done much of this research, and they found out some things very interesting. One group wrote about things that were, you know, they, they got a few people together, and they asked a, a, a bunch of, of volunteers to write down a few sentences focusing on some particular topics that happened to them each week. One group wrote about things they were grateful for, that they had occurred during the week. A second group wrote about daily irritations, upsets, things that displeased them. And a third group wrote about events that had affected them, with no particular emphasis on being positive or negative. It may have been neutral. So one group wrote about all the bad things, one wrote about all the good things uh, they were grateful for, and the third one they just left neutral. About 10 weeks later, those who wrote about the things they were grateful for were more optimistic, they were more happier, they felt better about their own lives because they took time to write down things they were grateful for. Surprisingly, they also exercised more health and they, there was fewer visi visits to the doctor's office. They found out the people that were praising or thanking or being grateful for what they had, they just went less to the doctor. They seem to have been more healthy than those that were focusing on their grievances. The f those that were focusing on the things that went wrong in their life. Another research that was done in the University of Pennsylvania, they tested the impact of various positive psychology interventions on 411 people. They were testing different psychological intervention. This is secular psychological studies. People that was, were being tested, 411 of them, they controlled the different kinds of psychological interventions and they wanted to know which ones were helpful. Each one of those interventions were compared to a controlled subject to assess what the outcome of these interventions were. When their week's assignment was to write and personally deliver a letter of gratitude to someone who had never been probably properly thanked for his or her kindness. This is what the participants had to do, the volunteers. They had to write a letter to someone who has never been properly thanked and to go out and express to the person a gratitude. Participants immediately exhibited a huge increase in happiness scores. They found out psychologically when they went out and were grateful, they humbled themselves, took a step to say thank you to all the people they were never really able to thank they found out they were just more happy. The impact was greater than that from any other psychological intervention. Can you believe that? With benefits lasting from this act of writing a letter of gratitude, the benefits went on for a whole month. They were happier, longer. They were, they were, you know, they were more, you know, they just chose to be grateful. Some people end up blaming others. They spend their life blaming others, telling because of them and because of them. And those are the kind of people that are just going to be unhappy. It doesn't matter what kind of things. Now, and, and, and you might think, well, maybe I need medication. Maybe I need this and that. And the Bible goes on to talk about this research in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 8. It says, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are praiseworthy, whatever things are good report, think on these things. Think about the things that God has done for you and me. And the research will show that it made people happier and the effects lasted longer. 
Of course, studies such as this one cannot prove that this is the exact cause and effect, but it definitely points towards an association between gratitude and an individual's happiness. Other studies have also looked at how gratefulness bettered relationships between people. For example, studies were found between couples that took time to express gratitude and to tell one another, you know, I thank God for you. I'm so happy I'm married to you. And I, I really thank you so much for the person who you are. And they found out when they expressed gratitude to their partners or marriage to their spouses, they felt more positive emotions towards the other person, but also felt comfortable expressing some of the concerns they have in the relationship. When they express gratitude, that became a doorway also to comfortably express the concerns they had without fighting. Managers, they found, who took time to say thank you to their employees, found out that their employees, their productivity went up. They found out that the employees were, the employees were happier with the managers and they were more motivated to work than people who just simply you know, who told them about the things that were not completed. There are many, many things that research has found about gratitude, but there are some notable exceptions too. And one of the notable exceptions I want to talk about is that a, a study found that a middle-aged divorced woman who kept gratitude journals, she was asked to keep journals and write down things she was grateful for, was no more satisfied with her life than those who did not. They couldn't find any difference. Another study found that children and adolescents who wrote and delivered a thank you letter to someone who made a difference in their life may have made the other person happy, but ne not necessarily improve their own happiness. Now, what does that tell you? Of course, the, the, this particular research was far and few in between. What does that tell you? This finding suggests not only can gratitude make people happy, it also tells us that gratitude is an attainment associated with emotional maturity. That only people who are emotionally more mature, spiritually more mature, emotionally more mature, only those people are truly people that learn to be grateful for what they have. Emotionally immature people are complaining and, and, and upset about different things in life. The Bible talks about, in Luke's gospel in chapter 17, verse 11 through 19, the Bible talks about a story about 10 lepers. The Bible says when Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem, and he was passing between Samaria and Galilee, and I find it interesting in the Bible, every time the Bible talks about Samaria and some place in Judea or in Israel. They were passing, he was passing between Samaria and Galilee because the, the, the Jewish people, the Israelites, they hated the Samaritans. They, they wouldn't touch them with a 10-foot pole. They would just stay away from the Samaritans. And Jesus was passing by. As he entered a village, 10 leprous men who stood at a distance met him. Now, I find it interesting of these numbers. 10 leprous men in a village between Samaria and Israel, in Jerusalem or wherever it was. 10 leprous men. And it goes on to say, they raised their voice and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When they saw him, he said to them, go and show yourselves to the priest. And as they were going, they were cleansed. While they were on the journey to the priest, they got cleansed. Now one of them, when he saw that he had been healed, he turned back glorifying God with a loud voice. This guy who got healed turned around and he began to glorify God with a loud voice. And he fell at his feet, on his face at Jesus' feet, giving thanks to him. And he was a Samaritan. I want you to note the word, and he was a Samaritan. Ten people in a village between, say, Jerusalem and Samaria. And this one among the ten that came back and showed gratitude, the Bible says, was a Samaritan. You know, what intrigues me is that the Jewish people and the Samaritans, they don't like each other. For they, they had about a thousand years of rivalry and bad taste in their mouths for one another. They felt they betrayed people. Samaritans always betrayed the Jewish people. They were not brethren anymore. They were angry. But it's interesting that when all of them that caught leprosy, the Jews and the Samaritans who don't like each other, it's interesting when you're leprous, how you don't mind staying together in the same village. Because by that time, others reject you. Common of rejection from other people make rejected people come together 
even if you don't like each other. It, you know, I was thinking about it. You, the, both of them, all those 10 may have grown up in villages that may have spoken evil about each other. But when they got leprous, they came back together. And they were staying together. And when Jesus healed them, only one turned back and came back and said, Thank you, Jesus, for healing me. And Jesus says, It's amazing. That the one that came back. Jesus answered and said, Were there not ten that were cleansed? But the nine, where are they? Was no one found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner, someone outside the covenant? And he said, Stand up and go. Your faith has made you well. Many times in our life, we so-called believers who claim to know God, who claim to love God, when it comes back to being grateful, when it comes back to being thankful, when it comes back to saying, Lord, thank you for the goodness of God on my life, many times believers fall short of a heart of gratitude. And many others who come from maybe another background or another faith system, when they encounter Christ, they're so grateful to God for everything God has done in their life because they know where they have come from and so therefore they choose to be grateful with all their heart. Doesn't the Samaritan, the story of the ten lepers, isn't that sound so much like us? In our lives, many times we take God for granted. In our lives, many times we forget the goodness of God upon our lives. How good God has been. And we choose to remember the th times that God has not been good to us. In my life, I have told myself all through these years, practice a lifestyle of gratitude. Paul said in Philippians in chapter 4, verse 13. Now, I know what it means to abound. Uh, I know what it means to abase. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. He learned a lifestyle of contentment. Contentment makes us grateful. We, in fact, look for things to be grateful about. There are people, there are broken lives I've met in the church People with, with broken lives from various circumstances. And yet I have found some are happy. Some are responding well. Some are always grateful. And then you have the other broken lives who are complaining, who are upset. True, their circumstances are painful in all of their lives. But one is grateful and happy and the other is complaining and unhappy. One is getting healed and the other one is getting more and more sick. And I thought to myself, oh, gratitude is a choice we make. Gratitude is a choice we make based on our maturity of our emotions. We have so many reasons, people of God, to be grateful. In, in your life and my life, we have so many reasons to be grateful. We can be grateful because our God, He's a righteous God. We can be grateful because God is a good God. We can be grateful because God loves us. His loving kindness endures forever. We can be grateful because of God's provision. God supplied my need all these years. What a good God He's been. Even before I asked, the Father in heaven knows what I need. And we can be grateful. We can be grateful because of the miracles God is doing in our lives. The wondrous things that God has done. We just heard a testimony of God's supernatural healing. Oh, we can be grateful for that. We can be grateful for answering prayer. There are so many who can testify when their loved one was in the ICU, the intensive care unit, how you'd pace up and down the aisle way and you'd be calling out to God and say, God, unless you do something, Lord, I cannot, I need a miracle. And God answers prayer. Oh, how we can be grateful. We can be grateful because God is a good God. He's a true God. There is no one else like Him. You can be grateful because you're not sick. You can be grateful because you can say along with the, with the psalmist, I am fearfully and I am wonderfully made. When I look at people that are, have disabilities in my heart, my heart is broken. When I consider the struggles and the pains they may have had to go through in life. But I also take time to thank God, saying, God, Lord, I want to just make the most of my life. And if these people with some disabilities, if they can be happy, and if they can be grateful, 
if they can say that their life is meaningful then lord how much more should i be able to be grateful with my life there's so many reasons to be grateful cuz i'm forgiven by god i can be grateful because god has saved my soul he's he's transformed my life there's there's eternity that i can live for i can be grateful because of wisdom god has put putting on my life the wisdom of god's word that i didn't have to make all the mistakes that so many of the other people my friends have made i can be grateful for being you know that 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 being alive today that we not you know didn't go through the brokenness that has caused many to take their own lives through suicide that we are alive we have another chance that we have got an opportunity to make a difference we also can be grateful for an opportunity to serve god the bible says god has called us with his amazing love many times when we serve god serving god is often more than just because we have skill or talent many people they serve god because they feel that god has called them i'm serving god because of god's call some people say i'm up serving god because because of this skill or this gift i have that's why i want to serve i'm using my gifts to serve god some people say i'm serving god because i fear the lord i'm afraid i don't want to get on his bad books some serve god because they say oh there's a reward in glory for me when i serve god some serve god because they say oh oh that will give me honor and recognition before the saints of god some serve god because of reputation it's an honorable thing in the eyes of the people in their community to be known as a pastor or a preacher or someone that's serving god some serve god because it's you have opportunities to serve him some serve because of self strength i have the ability to do this some serve god because they say i have time some serve because they say it's convenient for me some say i'm just comfortable it's comfortable to serve and so i'm serving and so many other reasons but the real reason to serve god is because we are so grateful to god there's a song that goes like this i was once in darkness but now my eyes can see i was lost but jesus sought and found me oh what love he offers oh what peace he gives and i will sing forevermore that he lives our reason to serve him to testify about him is a heart of gratitude apostle paul said in first timothy chapter 1 was 12 onwards he says i thank christ jesus our lord who strengthened me because he considered me faithful and putting me into service even though formerly i was a blasphemer a persecutor and a violent aggressor yet i was shown mercy because i acted ignorantly and in unbelief and the grace of god our lord was more abundant with faith and love which is found in christ jesus it is a trustworthy statement deserving full acceptance that christ jesus came into the world to save sinners among whom i am the foremost of sinners yet for this reason i found mercy so that in me the foremost jesus christ might demonstrate his perfect patience as an example for those who would believe in him for eternal life now unto the king eternal immortal invisible the only god be honor and glory forever and ever look at that last statement that's a powerful statement of gratitude now unto the king eternal immortal invisible the only god be honor and glory forever and ever god wants you and me to be thankful we can we can be thankful for his call on our life we can be thankful for people in our life many times we forget to be thankful for the people that have been there i i have i'm grateful for the men of god that have poured into my life i'm grateful for the pastors and the leaders i'm grateful for fellow servants in the work of the gospel and i've known that i know that i've gone further because of them and they've gone further because of me none of us could do it alone i've learned to be grateful for all the people that are fellow workers with us in the gospel the bible talks about them in fact paul took time 
to specifically dedicate a chapter in Romans in chapter 16 mentioning all the people that he was grateful for he Paul had a heart of gratitude people of God I think we can be grateful for family have you been grateful for your father and your mother have you been grateful for your brother and your sister your siblings have you been grateful for your children if not I want you to take time have you been grateful for your husband and for your wife you know take time to say thank you take time to say thank you lord and take time to go and tell your loved ones how grateful you are for them write a letter to them send them an email maybe you know send them a voice note give them a call and tell them tell them you know when my parents completed 50 years of them being married i walked up to them and i remember telling thank you thank you for staying married for 50 years and counting now i said thank you for staying married it's been a great example to us go out of your way be thankful be thankful for the food on the table be thankful for the clothes on your back be thankful for the air that you can breathe be thankful for the infilling of the holy spirit be thankful for the voice of god that is available to make godly decisions in your life be thankful for the health you have be thankful for the friends you have be thankful for all of life itself in everything give thanks for this is the will of god in christ jesus concerning you and me father we want to pray together right now lord if there are anybody here listening to me today to me that's not been able to be grateful i pray they will understand the power of gratitude that only emotionally mature people truly know what it means to be grateful i ask right now in jesus name that they will step out of their comfort zone that they will call people and tell people how much they're grateful they will send texts or emails to people and tell people how they are grateful lord let there be a healing even in their psychological wounds as they begin to open their mouth and thank you lord in gratitude for all the wonderful things you've done for them lord our hearts are so often so ungrateful that we are so ungrateful to you and ungrateful to people in our life father we repent for that ingratitude and father we want to say thank you for all the people in our life and father lord you begun a good work in our life you'll be faithful to bring it to completion as in the day of the lord jesus we give you glory and honor bless us lord with a life of gratitude in jesus mighty name amen and amen amen god bless you and have a wonderful week ahead going ahead and telling people how grateful you are for everything god and others are doing in your life god bless you